Thursday, June 28th, and this is your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski with the latest local news, including the search for a bank robber in Milford, a fatal motorcycle crash on Route 8, and much more. Rob Adams will join us with a look at your forecast and a Nutmeg Sports update, and Donald Dang also will take a look back on this day in history. But first, a 53-year-old motorcycle rider from Derby was killed in a crash on Route 8 Monday afternoon, according to the Valley Independent Sentinel. State police said Sean P. Reynolds was riding his 2005 Kawasaki North near the Exit 13 off-ramp when he rear-ended a truck as the vehicles tried to merge into the highway's center lane. Reynolds was thrown from his motorcycle and was pronounced dead at the scene, according to state police. The truck driver in that crash was not injured. The crash happened just before 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Anyone with information on the accident should call state police at 203-393-4200, extension 3085. And the Milford Police Department is looking for a man who allegedly told a bank teller at Chase Bank last Friday that he had a gun before making off with an undisclosed amount of money. Police say the robbery took place at the Chase Bank, located at 1651 Boston Post Road, June 24th, at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Milford police say a man entered the bank and approached the teller, passing a note that stated, I have a gun, give me the money. No weapon was displayed during that robbery. After receiving the money, the suspect left on foot out the front door and headed east on Boston Post Road. A police canine track was conducted, which ended in the parking lot of the AMF bowling alley. The suspect is described as a white man, 30 to 40 years old, approximately 5 foot 4 to 5 foot 7, wearing a maroon baseball cap with a white brim, brown aviator style sunglasses, as well as a dark colored long sleeve shirt, jeans and white sneakers. The suspect at the time was also carrying a large dark colored backpack. Anyone with information is asked to contact Milford Police at 203-783-4759. And a school counselor will be available at Joe Barlow High School this week should any student wish to speak to one following a serious crash involving local teens in Reading. On Sunday night, a 16-year-old Easton teen was critically injured after being ejected from a car on Cross Highway in Reading Sunday night. This happened around 10.30 at night. According to police, the boy was driving in a car with two other young men. The operator, a 17-year-old Easton boy, and another passenger, a 16-year-old Fairfield boy, when the operator lost control of the vehicle and left the roadway. The car traveled into the woods and down an embankment in the valley section of the road, according to police. The 16-year-old Easton boy, who was critically injured, did not appear to be wearing a seatbelt and was ejected during the crash. Cross Highway is a road that is commonly used to connect routes 107 and routes 58. It features a very steep incline-decline section where the boys traveled off the road. Reading police are still investigating the cause of the crash. No charges have been filed. And the Bridgeport Police Detective Bureau is looking for public assistance in identifying a perpetrator responsible for a shooting that occurred at Grandfield Avenue near Carnegie Avenue within the Success Park parking lot on June 26. As you can see in the video, the victim is walking when another man confronts him, shoots him multiple times at close range before the victim runs away. In the video, it appears the suspect might follow the victim, but he turns around. Anyone with information is urged to contact Detective Cantrell at 203-581-5240. And according to the Connecticut Better Business Bureau, a recently released government study offers a snapshot of common consumer scams and the number of victims over the course of one year. Hundreds of types of scams have been reported over the past decade. The most often reported type of scam in Connecticut involves calls from Internal Revenue Service imposters. The list is extensive and constantly growing and evolving, according to the Better Business Bureau. But the report provided a sample of five common ways that consumers lose money to criminals, according to the FTC report. Among those are the selling of weight loss sub supplements, which about 5.1 million people fall victim to. Another is 
claims of free lunches, trips, and other prize promotions. That captures about 2.4 million victims, along with Buyers Club memberships that has 1.9 million victims, unauthorized billing for internet services, another 1.9 million people fall victims to those scams, and work at home office offers, 1.8 million people fall victims to that scam. The Better Business Bureau says the best way to protect yourself is by understanding how these scams work and sharing the information with your family, friends, and colleagues. And a tractor trailer Monday afternoon got stuck under a railroad overpass bridge in New Canaan, clogging up traffic there for a couple of hours. Old Stamford Road Route 106 was closed to all traffic between Lapham Road and Weed Street as the tractor trailer struck the railroad overpass bridge around noon yesterday. The road was reopened by about 3 o'clock. Metro North Railroad reported that there were no defects to the railroad tracks that were found and there were no delays that happened as a result on the New Canaan branch. And the body of an alligator was found in the Connecticut River Sunday, but it turns out that alligator was a fake. The Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection was investigating Monday, and the DEP confirmed that the alligator was in fact stuffed. It was first reported that the alligator was dead when it was found. The stuffed gator was about four feet long and found in the mud on the river's shore in Suffield. But we are going to switch gears now and throw it over to Rob Adams for a look at the forecast, which is a little cloudy today, Rob. I'm still laughing at the alligator, yeah. yes. It is kind of a, a dreary day outside, Kate. For the moment, the showers have ended, but we do have a chance of showers that will roll into the afternoon. A cloudy day with a high near 77 and the wind out of the south at 11 miles per hour. Showers and thunderstorms likely again tonight into the overnight hours as we continue with those chance of showers. It'll It'll stay around 60% and some of those storms could, could could produce small hail gusty winds you know the drill heavy rain mostly cloudy 65 for the low to Wednesday the chance of showers decreases down to uh, about 30% but we'll continue to have a chance of not only showers and thunderstorms until the afternoon hours, partly sunny and a high near 81 Wednesday night. A continued chance of showers and thunderstorms. Again, we need it, so I guess we can't complain. Partly cloudy, 62. Sunny and 82 for Thursday, though. Absolutely beautiful. Friday, sunny and 83. Sunny and 84 Saturday. Sunny and 81 Sunday. And you want your independence? I've got fireworks for you. Sunny and 82. Enjoy it. Absolutely beautiful. We look around. Monroe, you're at 72. Redding, 70. Here in Shelton, 72 degrees. Cloudy skies, Kate. All right. Thanks so much, Rob. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Donald Dang takes a look back on this day in history. Rob Adams has your Nutmeg Sports update, and we have a lot more local news coming up after this. Have a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care, open Monday through Saturday, now in two locations. The I Park Building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk and 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien. Or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com, like them on Facebook. Keep your future star active and happy this summer at Future Star Sports Academy Camps and Clinics. The Academy is offering sessions throughout Fairfield County. Sign up for a week of basketball, cheerleading, football, or a multi-sports camp. At Future Stars Academy, children learn the fundamentals while under the supervision of qualified coaches. And what sets the Academy apart is its special Lessons of Life sessions, teaching values and focusing on building self-esteem, friendships, and honesty. Located at Sports Center Connecticut in Shelton and in Sports and Trumbull. Register online at futurestarsportsacademy.com. What's happening up in Hartford and what's trending in the Nutmeg State? Join Kate Chaplinski and Josh Fisher on CT Pulse Live Wednesdays at 1230 to find out. 
We talk to the leaders and newsmakers while breaking down the stories you should be paying attention to each week. With the help of HAN's editorial cartoonist Doug Smith, we take a humorous look at the news of the week. We talk about everything you were told you should avoid bringing up in polite company. CT Pulse, Wednesdays at 12.30 on the HAN Network. You're watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. Nearly one million people have watched our live sports, news, and entertainment programming since the network launched in August 2015. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Advertising Director Jessica Murren at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. We're back on this Tuesday, June 28th edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski, and it's time to throw it over to Donald Dang for a look back on this day in history. Check it out. They billed it as the sound and the fury, and boy, was it an assault on the ears. First, though, we go to 1778. American Continentals engage the British in the Battle of Monmouth and for the first time fight the Redcoats to a standstill in the open field. A woman named Mary Hayes Macaulay, wife of American artilleryman William Macaulay, was serving as a water carrier bringing water to the cannons to cool the guns and, for that matter, the gunners. So Soldiers typically referred to camp women with the generic name Molly, and when the guns overheated they would call out Molly Pitcher to summon water. When her husband collapsed in the 100 degree heat and was carried from the field, Macaulay took his place at the gun for the rest of the fight. According to legend, a British musket ball tore through her dress between her knees. She looked down at the bullet hole and said, well, that could have been worse, and resumed firing the gun. 1914, Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria and his wife Sophie assassinated in Sarajevo by Bosnia Serb nationalist Gavrilo Princip setting in motion a chain of events that would lead to World War I. Amazingly, one of the most destructive wars in history was fought because the two sides had timetables and plans to mobilize for war, but literally no plan to not go to war. 1978, the U.S. Supreme Court orders the medical school at the University of California, Davis, to admit Alan Bake. Bake was an engineer and former U.S. Marine Corps officer and had sought admission to medical school, but was rejected by several schools in part because he was in his early 30s and considered too old. The California Supreme Court struck down the affirmative action program at UC Davis as violating the rights of white applicants and ordered Bake admitted. Finding diversity in the classroom to be a compelling state interest, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that affirmative action in general was allowed under the Constitution, but UC Davis's quota-based program went too far. The practical effect of the case was that most affirmative action programs continued without change. Finally, now we go to 1997 for this. Oh, and some nasty stuff in there. There need to be a bite almost. Holyfield is very unhappy. Look at this. It looked as if Tyson bared his teeth at one stage in the exchange. Yes, Pitch I think his ear. He, he bit his ear. That's what Holyfield was in a lot of pain from that. You see the blood on the ear. That was definitely a bite. And of course, Holyfield Tyson 2. Mike Tyson disqualified after the third round for biting off a piece of Evander Holyfield's ear. The fight was delayed several minutes as referee Mills Lane debated what to do about it. Lane's original decision was to immediately disqualify Tyson, but the ringside doctor determined that Holyfield was able to continue despite the bite. The fight was resumed and during another clinch Tyson bit Holyfield's other ear. Lane didn't stop the fight this time either, so the two men continued fighting until time expired. After they walked back to their respective corners, the second bite was discovered and the fight was stopped. That is your look back in history for today, June 28th, and I'm Donald Ng. Thanks as always to Don. It's now time to throw it back to Rob for a Nutmeg Sports Update. All right, Kay, thank you very much. All right, Connecticut, your long national nightmare is over. No, this is not some lame political commentary or joke. We're not trying to get the governor out of office. But the reality is that, at least for 2016, the scourge known as the 50-point rule is finished. The rule was put in place in 2006 to ensure that teams weren't winning by obscenely large margins and, in theory, running up the score. Teams that won by 51 or more points risk losing their coach to a one-game suspension. Running clock will be used this season if a team is leading by 42 points or more in the third quarter or 35 in the fourth quarter 
fans, coaches, broadcasters, players all say hallelujah. We'll have more on this on Nutmeg Sports at 2 o'clock today. From American Legion Baseball, no games in American Legion last night, but a full slate on the docket tonight. In the 19U division, we have got Darianne New Canaan at Greenwich. Bridgeport is home for Westport. Ridgefield is at Fairfield. Norwalk and Trumbull will play a doubleheader in Trumbull, and Wilton and Stanford meet at Cubetta Stadium. From the 17U division, it's Ridgefield and Fairfield meeting. Darianne and New Canaan home for Greenwich. Wilton at Stanford, and Bridgeport is at Westport. The Trumbull Babe Ruth 14 under All-Star team won the District 2 championship with a 6-5 victory over Norwalk at Brian McMahon High School on Monday. The team will next compete in the state tournament that begins in Newtown on Friday the 8th. Trumbull scored three runs in the top of the first and the locals added a run in the third and the fourth innings. Norwalk stormed back to tie the game at five in the bottom of the fifth. The Danbury Westerners topped the Ocean State Waves last night at Rogers Park 5-3. Eddie Silva and Sean Blake. Sean Blake is from Stratford. They both homered for the Westerners. By the way, a little side note. The game was called by one-time HAN Network broadcasters Kevin Coleman and Justin Galanti. I can tell you, I listened. They did a great job, and you can hear them both again tonight when the two meet in Rhode Island. Not Kevin and Justin, but the teams. Kevin and Justin will be there. The Bridgeport Bluefish dropped to 10 games under 500 as they lost to the Lancaster Barnstormers 4-3 at Clipper Magazine Stadium in the opener of a four-game series on Monday. Bridgeport starting pitcher Jimmy Patterson dropped to 1-2 on the year after 5 and 2 thirds of work in which he allowed four runs on seven hits, walking two and striking out seven. The Fish have lost four in a row. They continue their series tonight in Pennsylvania. Dutch country have a pretzel on me. The New Britain Bees dropped three straight. The Bees lost four to one to the Somerset Patriots. They meet again tonight in New Jersey. The Hartford Yard Goats pounded out 14 hits as they throttled the New Hampshire Fisher Cats eight to two. The Aberdeen Ironbirds scored three in the seventh, and they beat the Connecticut Tigers three to two. The Tigers are back at Dodd Stadium tonight to host the Lowell Spinners. And the Stratford Breakettes are off until Thursday. And the two notes, in case you missed it on a larger scale, and one of them really to a Connecticut point of view, is the passing of Pat Summit, of course, the longtime legendary coach at the University of Tennessee. Of course, great rival with Gino Oriema and the UConn Huskies. Buddy Ryan, the uh, NFL former head coach of the Eagles, also passing away today. So a couple of down notes as we finish, but lots of sports for Don and I to talk about, including a visit with Danny Melzer, the new head coach of the new Canaan Rams boys basketball team. We'll talk to him at 2 o'clock today on Nutmeg Sports right here on the HAN Network. But that's it for sports. I'm Rob Adams. Kate, back to you. All right. Thanks so much, Rob. Well, getting back to some news today, the report of a missing boy had a happy ending yesterday in Milford. On Monday afternoon, Milford police asked for help in finding a 13-year-old boy, Nicholas Boudreau, who had left his home at about 11 yesterday morning. However, by 4 o'clock in the afternoon, Nicholas was located in the area of his home and has since been returned in good health. The Milford Police Department thanked the community for all their support and for spreading the message in helping to find Nicholas. And the town of New Canaan will be conducting a training exercise today at Silver Hill Hospital. The exercise started at 7 Tuesday morning and will continue through 2 this afternoon. The drill has been organized as part of an ongoing effort to train public safety agencies and community partners. Officials say that this simulated all hazards training will assist public safety personnel to implement and enhance policies and procedures designed to keep the town safe. During the hours of the exercise, residents may see numerous emergency vehicles and public safety personnel within the perimeter of Silver Hill Hospital. Officials say they will do their best to maintain traffic, but it is suggested that Valley Road be avoided if possible possible during the times of the training exercise. Additionally, they say they will be simulating gunfire. And the Brian McMahon High School valedictorian Laura Vera has come forward to speak out about the fact that she is an undocumented immigrant. Hearst Connecticut Media reports that the 17-year-old who is heading to Harvard University announced that fact to that she is a proud undocumented Latina to a crowd of hundreds last Wednesday at the graduation ceremony. It was her speech as the class Victoria valedictorian and it was met with cheers and rapturous applause, so much so that she had to pause and wait for it to die before continuing. 
Hearst Media reports that Vera is part of a small percentage of undocumented students who graduate from high school, with only 5 to 10 percent of those graduates going on to attend colleges, studies show. But she is also part of a growing cohort of students and graduating valedictorians that surprise their graduation commencement audience with their undocumented status. The decision to come out of the undocumented closet, as Vera said, comes in a time when presumptive Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump has proposed building a wall to keep out undocumented immigrants from entering the U.S. And she said her part of the motivation for making such a bold statement was to hopefully change the minds of some of the Trump supporters at her school. And another motivation, she said, was to inspire others to open up. And in other news today, since Trumbull Police canine Cyrus died prematurely on June 14th, the clinic that cared for him is working to raise money to support getting the Trumbull Police Department another police dog. For those who had taken care of Cyrus for the last seven years at the mobile veterinary clinic on Monroe Turnpike, the fallen police dog was more than just a productive member of the force. He was part of the family of animals that the office staff will always remember. According to Heidi Bowler, the clinic's office manager, he was a wonderful patient, and it was heartbreaking and very sudden. Bowder and the office's veterinarians have teamed up with the police department to fundraise for a new partner for Officer R.J. Carlson, who trained and lived with Cyrus before the canine died. Proceeds will go toward finding and training another dog for Officer Carlson, who plans to remain part of the department's canine unit. The goal is to collect $13,500, but not much has been raised yet. Specifically, people can make a tax-deductible donation by writing and mailing a check made out to the town of Trumbull. The memo line should read Police Canine. Checks can also be mailed to the Trumbull Police Department, located at 158 Edison Road, to the attention of Chief Michael Lombardo. Well, we are going to step out for a break, and when we come back, we're going to recap some of the top stories we're following today on your coffee break after this. I really wanted something that felt like a home. Coming from a big house, I wanted the feel of a home as opposed to a condo. The construction is incredible, whether it's the floors, the fireplace, the moldings, the lighting. It's as peaceful as my home was in the middle of the woods. It feels like a house. It does not feel like a condo or a townhome. I feel like I'm in my house. Walter Stewart's Market in New Canaan is your time-saving local shopping destination for the best of spring. Find many of your favorite products, from great specials on everyday items to the freshest organic produce, artisanal cheeses, and grass-fed steaks. Chop off your knives to be sharpened, grab a beautiful bouquet of spring flowers, and stop in next door for a wine tasting. Plus, their personable staff is always ready to lend a helping hand. So stop in to Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, today, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. Mosquitoes, ticks, gone. Guaranteed. That's what Mosquito Squad guarantees as America's most trusted mosquito and tick control company. Locally owned and operated, over 90,000 homes have been protected by Mosquito Squad using their dual protection method for season-long protection, which includes barrier spray service for eliminating mosquitoes and adult ticks, as well as supplemental programs to increase tick control. They use only USDA organic options, which are safe and non-toxic. Contact them today at www.squadctny.com or 203-893-4309. Mosquito Squad. No bugs, no bites, no kidding. When it comes to local entertainment, we've got it all. From movies, local artists, etiquette, and more. Watch HAN Arts and Leisure every Thursday at 2 on the HAN Network. I'm Denise DiGregoli, the host of The Drive on the HAN Network. Join me Tuesdays for some motivational, intelligent talk with a little humor as we visit with people who live their lives mindfully. Tune in to The Drive live on Tuesdays, 1230, here on the HAN Network. I'm John Kovac. I'm a newspaper editor. I'm a high school football coach. I'm a television presenter. And I want you to love fishing as much as I do. Tune in to Yankee Fisherman. Thursdays at 1 on the HAN Network. It's like going to the tackle shop without leaving your office. 
I'm John. We're back on this Tuesday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski, recapping some of the top stories we're following today, including that a 53-year-old motorcycle rider from Derby was killed in a crash on Route 8 Monday afternoon, according to the Valley Independent Sentinel. State police said Sean P. Reynolds was riding his 2005 Kawasaki North near exit 13 off-ramp when he rear-ended a truck as the vehicles tried to merge into the highway center lane. Reynolds was thrown from his motorcycle and pronounced dead at the scene. The truck driver was not injured in that crash, which happened just before 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Anyone with information on the accident is asked to call state police at 203-393-4200, extension 3085. And the Milford Police Department is looking for a man who allegedly told a bank teller at Chase Bank last Friday that he had a gun before making off with an undisclosed amount of money. Police said the robbery took place at the Chase Bank located on Boston Post Road at about 4 in the afternoon. Police said a man entered the bank, approached the teller, passing a note that said, I have a gun, give me the money. No weapon was displayed during that robbery, and after receiving the money, the suspect left on foot out the front door and headed east on the Boston Post Road. A police canine track was conducted and ended in the parking lot of AMF Bowling. The suspect is described as a white man, 30 to 40 years old, approximately 5 foot 4 to 5 foot 7, wearing a maroon baseball cap with a white brim, brown aviator sunglasses, a dark colored long sleeve shirt, jeans, and white sneakers. Anyone with information can contact detectives at 203-783-4759. And a school counselor will be available at Joe Barlow High School this week should any student wish to speak to one following a serious crash involving local teens in Reading. On Sunday, a 16-year-old Easton teen was critically injured after being ejected from a car on Cross Highway in Reading Sunday night, June 26, around 10.30. According to police, the boy was driving in a car with two other young men. The operator, a 17-year-old Easton boy, and another passenger, a 16-year-old Fairfield boy, when the operator lost control of the vehicle and left the roadway. The car traveled into the woods and down an embankment in the valley section of the road. The 16-year-old Easton boy who was critically injured did not appear to be wearing a seatbelt and was ejected from the car during that crash. Cross Highway is a road that is commonly used to connect Routes 107 and Route 58. It features a very steep incline decline section where the boys traveled off the road. Reading police are investigating the cause of the crash and no charges have been filed. And the Bridgeport Police Detective Bureau is looking for assistance in identifying a perpetrator responsible for a shooting that occurred at Granfield Avenue near Carnegie Avenue within the Success Park parking lot on June 26. As you can see in the video, the victim is walking when another man confronts him, shoots him multiple times at close range before the victim runs away. In the video, it appears the suspect may follow the victim, but he turns around. Anyone with information is asked to contact detectives at 2 Zero three five eight one five two four zero. And finally, the body of an alligator was found in the Connecticut River on Sunday, but it turns out that alligator was a fake. The Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection were called in to investigate, and on Monday they confirmed that the alligator was in fact stuffed. It was first reported that the alligator was dead when it was found. The stuffed gator was about four feet long and found in the mud on the river's shore in Suffield. All right, we're going to throw it back to Rob Adams now for one final look at the forecast. All right, Kate, I wish I could give you better news outside, but again, I think it's probably good. If you mowed the lawn, you know what I'm talking about over the weekend. This was not uh, a very pretty scene. We have a 40% chance of showers. We've already seen plenty of rain really through later yesterday and even some during the overnight hours. We'll have a cloudy day, 77 for the high. Showers and thunderstorms, chance of that all throughout tonight into tomorrow into Wednesday night. Our, our low tonight will only be down to 65. We'll hit 81 tomorrow and we'll drop to 62 for Wednesday night. But again, chance of showers and thunderstorms and some of them could be fairly strong. To Thursday, sunny and 82. Mostly sunny and 83 for Friday. Saturday, sunny and 84. Sunny and 81 for Sunday. And Independence Day, the 4th of July, sunny and a high. 
near 82 degrees. Monroe, you're sitting at 72. Redding at 70. Shelton, we're up a degree to 73. I'll see you for Nutmeg Sports at 2 o'clock. Danny Melzer will be our guest, Kate. All right, thanks so much, Rob. And of course, at 1230, The Drive with Denise live in studio. Be sure to check that out. We're going to wrap things up here on your coffee break, and we'll see you tomorrow at 11. Have a great day.